Hi, this is David Abank Turtle. Welcome to video 9A, which is the first of three videos devoted to the topic of current issues in the part two FRM 2012. In sequence, we start with three of the readings. These are all qualitative, which is to say we don't really have computations. And that is the U.S. and Irish credit crises, a paper which reappears from the prior year in the FRM. Second, a report to the Board of Directors of Allied Irish Bank. And third, banking and um, the panic of 2007, which reappears from at least uh, for the last two years in the FRM. And this Gary Gordon is fairly significant in current issues. He's, uh, his, his ideas and perspectives on the financial crisis are fairly representative of the current issues. So the Gary Gordon paper is significant for us. First, the U.S. and Irish credit crises, their difference and commonalities. And so in terms of similarities between the U.S. and the Irish crisis, the paper identifies four common, what they call deep causal factors. So the first is that they both had in common irrational exuberance and the associated asset bubble that is produced by irrational exuberance. And so the authors say that this irrational exuberance grew out of uh, an unusually benign economic climate in the U.S. A, some had referred to that as great moderation. In Ireland, they had called that the Celtic Tiger period. Second, again, a commonality, capital flow bonanza. Very low real borrowing rates sustained by international capital inflows into both countries. Third, regulatory imprudence in response to political pressure by special interest. And fourth, moral hazard behavior by agents in the financial sector. So moral hazard, we've seen that before, especially in, in the um, topic of uh, t topic six, credit and the uh, subprime securitization. A big difference between the U.S. and Irish crisis was the troubled assets behind the crisis. The U.S. and its crisis is generally referred to 2007 and 8. The credit liquidity crisis followed a period of rapid financial innovation during which many complex new products were introduced. And so we're familiar with those. In particular, those would be the asset-based securitizations, the ABS, and specifically mortgage-backed securities, subprime mortgage-backed securities, collateralized mortgage obligations, CDOs, and even CDO squared, generally the structured finance products. In contrast, the Irish, cri the Irish crisis evolved from a traditional credit boom and bust. And so the authors point out that the Irish banks were not involved in financial securitization to any great extent, and they had not really yet adopted the originate and distribute model that was prevalent in the U.S. How can investor and market sentiment lead to an asset price inflation and bubbles? In the U.S., negative sentiment towards subprime mortgage assets, assets spilled over into markets for other structured debt. And so we've seen this as uh, some have called this guilt by association. Some would call it one of the aspects of contagion. And that's where just the uh, assets that are proximate are just tainted by association. Initial liquidity shortages were exacerbated by lack of appetite on the part of investors for commercial paper, even if backed by assets other than mortgage. This caused a transmission of crisis from institutions that were directly exposed to the U.S. subprime market to those that relied on short-term financing to fund their, their operations. And what about the difference between rational and irrational exuberance? Well, the basic difference drawn on the paper is one of fundamental supply and demand. Is So in irrational exuberance, this refers to a behavior anomaly of intermittent periods of aggregate overconfidence and overoptimism in security markets. So we might see the greater fool type theory, 